Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in San Francisco at Moscone North Lobby for VMworld 2015. It's our sixth year here doing the Cube at VMworld. It's uh, the new innovation. This is the, we're in the director set. We have the full Cube. Dave, my co-host Dave Vellante interviewing all the top thought leaders. I'm doing the venture capital segment here on Tuesday morning leading up to all the big dogs at VMware. And I'm proud to have VMware alum here, Pete Sonsini is also now a general partner at NEA, New, New Enterprise Associates, big time VC in the Valley, Cal alum, Berkeley. Um, a lot of stuff going on at Berkeley, we'll get to that in a second. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks so much for having me, great to see you. So NEA, huge fund, you guys have billions, what's the number, like two, three billion dollars now? Is three billion. Three billion dollar fund. So you got to put a lot of that cash to work, obviously. You got to write big fat checks. You still got some seed fund um, out there, but you're doing a range from seed to the big A's and B's and, and follow on. So, Enterprise is rocking and rolling, right? Mm -hmm. And you're seeing huge disruption. We heard from Pat Gelsinger today. Mm -hmm. um, total sea change. All VCs would agree. Obviously, this marketplace is on fire in the enterprise. Bubbly on the consumer side, no doubt about it. But in the enterprise, there's real underlying technology change happening. I mean, you were there at VMware early on. Virtualization changed the game. Now, big data, Spark, stuff coming out of Cal. All this stuff is a perfect storm. DevOps, front and center, cloud. What do you make of this as an investor? You've got to write checks. You have to kind of look at the trends, meet good people. How do, you, how do you tackle that? Well, so no question, amazing things going on in terms of major disruption. You can talk about microservices, you can talk about private cloud, you can talk about you know, container orchestration. The velocity is amazing. I mean, there's just no question about it. Um, the deals that are coming in and out are amazing. The opportunity is incredible. I think. You know, we uh, definitely are looking at it all, see a major sea change in each of these categories, and so we look at each and, you know, look for the winners and, and make evaluations as to when it's going to really be a reality. And I think the, the big thing is, when are these things going to be a reality? When are they going to be, you know, everybody likes to talk about the vision, the way the world could be, and um, it's very, uh, you know, intoxicating to think about these visions, but, you know, uh, I look at, you know, when is that going to happen and, and how do we get from here to there? And, and uh, so we look at a lot of these deals, it, certainly we make many investments that are at the cutting edge of a wave that may happen or may not, but today I'm kind of looking at, okay, how do we get from here to there? When is, you know, how do we make use of existing infrastructure, existing applications, and really connect that from the, the you know, kind of old world to where the world is headed. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm focused on is how you get from here yeah. to there. So a pragmatic approach, you're not a momentum investor. Momentum investor is someone, someone says, hey, I'm going to jump on that, that, that train and see how it, where it lands. You know, you gotta take sometimes some bets. you got to say, hey, we're not exposed, this is a very real trend. Um, we got to just, we got to get involved. I mean, you know, look at whether it's, you know, virtualization, I mean, you know. You, you wanted back to, then. You, you know, back then you wanted to kind of, you know, we jumped on Zen Source and nothing worked out. And there's, you know, I got early on Tintree, and you know, Tintree's doing pretty darn well. We got several kind of virtual, virtualized networking things. So, you know, you you see a trend, you want to jump on it, and if it, it, sometimes you you miss it, and you've got to scramble and you got to catch up. I mean, you know, containers kind of took the world by storm. I mean, no, nothing has quite had the growth uh, within the enterprise of the container uh, movement. And uh, you know, so there's a lot of venture firms out there who obviously didn't didn't see that, didn't uh, you know, didn't make that happen early enough. And yeah, you maybe got to do play catch up a little bit and scramble. And you know, and the the, the result of that is that you pay higher valuations and you got to kind of take the medicine. But um, the things that are really going to happen, then you know, in, in well, your valuations are in, an interesting in. conversation. So let's talk about that for a second because you know, I remember when people were betting on uh, Twitter, Facebook, on the social side. Oh my God, that's a huge valuation. How can they pay that? As it turns out, look at Facebook's valuation. Yeah. That, you know, it is what it is. If you, were, if you came in on the the back end of that deal, you still made a lot of cash. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Right? So, but there, I can tell you, I can tell you a lot of things that we you know may have looked that we weren't in, that we moved on quickly, and they kind of went, you know, they kind of fizzled out. So, I mean, that's just the venture business. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, and, and where we get paid is to uh, certainly get in deals early. I mean, it's a lot easier when you get in deals early, and we as a firm with NEA is, um, are very active with early stage investments. We do more early stage investments than anybody. Um, you know, probably 70% of our investments are early. So you, you get in early, and you have a, obviously 
you know, when those work out, then you're ahead of the game. Well, one area you're in right now that I've been watching is data. Yep. Um, talk about that, that's a hot trend. Obviously, it's pretty obvious that that market's yep. growing, right? Yep. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to yep. connect the dots on that. I mean, we speculate all the time at Wikibon that what Spark's doing and its relationship to Hadoop has obviously changed. We just had Ping Lee that, talking about Cloudera, one of his successes. Still, that's Spark's changing that. So there's our new, there's new stuff happening. Yep. What's going on in that area? I see that coming out of Berkeley and other computer science trends. Oh yeah. Big data, what do you see? Well, so, uh, you know, we're investors in MapR, which is, uh, you know, uh, Hadoop distribution, very focused on the file system, the storage layer. Um, and they're doing great. I mean, they're, they're very focused enterprise functionality, focusing on um, you know, HDFS and their HBase prep product with their M7 product. So, uh, you know, obviously uh, Hadoop is real, MapR is doing great, so we're very thrilled to be involved with that one. We got in early. Um, Databricks, you know, Spark is very much going to happen. Now, how, how you get into debate as to where it sits relative to Hadoop, whether Hadoop just becomes more storage oriented, um, you know, and Spark. Well, that's kind of shaking out now. I mean, well, Spark you know, is looking good off the tee, as they correct, say. Correct, correct. So Spark is, I, I think both of these things are, are clearly going to happen, and, and how they exactly pan out, I don't know. I mean, we're fortunate to be in both Databricks and MapR, so we feel good about that. Um, but there's other things going on. I mean, there's, there's uh, data ingestion, there's a lot of things with how you, you know, there's all these different diverse data sources, and, and, and how do you get data in, and how do you get it cleansed? I mean, there's talk about data drift, and so there's, some new early things we're looking at um, along that line of diverse data sets, data drift, how you get data in is an area which, you know, kind of next generation ETL, which hasn't been really um, shaken out yet. So that's something that we, um, you know, we're excited about. Yeah. We've got a company in, in that area that uh, uh, hasn't been announced that uh, w we think is going good. So certainly a lot of legs with data and, and uh, these, these things evolve through time. So, I mean, I can go on and on. I can say yes. All right, so what are your hot deals? Give us your hot deals. You mentioned Tintree. They're hot here. Hot deals. So Tintree's here, you know, they announced their flash product. They, you know, 100,000 VMs on a single single rack. Uh, first investors in Tintree, you know, my friend Kieran Hardy, who was ran engineering at, at, at VMware, of course, started that company. He was the first really in, uh, you know, storage for VMs, and they're they're really re being you know rewarded handsomely in the market for that. So certainly, Tintree, you know, hot company here. Um, we talked about MapR, we talked about Databricks. Uh, Nginx is a major high flyer in the making um, around microservices. Um, you know, certainly microservices trend, and you know how that as it fits into containers, very much working hand in hand. Those that's that's a very real uh, opportunity. And Nginx with its you know 150 million websites powered by Nginx are really the you know, have a great role in making all microservices work in the enterprise. Well, um, web scale guys like Nginx made a lot of things happen, now that's the whole software trend, software yeah. defined. Yeah, 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 exactly. So Nginx is, it's software, right? And, and they are uh, being used because of the dynamic routing capability of the software, it's using so many different applications, so many different areas uh, to deliver applications. It's uh, it, load balancing, caching, media serving and whatnot. So, their Nginx is replacing the appliances with software, basically. So the traditional appliance companies, whether it's F5 or whatever, um, Nginx is software, and you know that obviously plays in that trend of software eating the world. So you know anything that's appliance purpose built is really exposed to this software uh, software trend, which Nginx is moving very nicely into. So um, certainly, I mean, what first about the of data all, side? Data, data I love bricks. all my companies. Uh, data bricks, right? right? You're into. Is yeah, Databricks. So yeah, so Databricks MapR certainly okay, got it, um, okay. in the big data category. Um, I talked about Nginx, we talked about Tintree. Um, you know, all my companies I love, I could go on and on about the each VC one The VC mafia of them. right now and out of VMware is you, Chen, and Herod, top, yeah. top three. Yep. And there's some new guys coming in the, out of the woodwork. We're gonna, Who's uh, that? Uh, we'll see, Howie uh, is going to be on uh, soon, uh, this, I shouldn't say that, I'm not allowed to announce it until Thursday. Yeah, I, I was early VMware, yeah. so I don't, know, I don't know some of the later VMware guys yeah, they're as much. But, they're junior to you, but, but that's okay. Uh, but certainly Jerry and, and, <laughs> and Steve, and I'm sure you're yeah, a good guy, I don't want to take anything away from it. But, uh, what, about, what about VMware now? I mean, looking back, when it was a small company, virtualization was very disruptive uh, technology, was the real enabler. Yep. Um, how do you see VMware now disrupting the ecosystem? And also, you're investing in the ecosystem, so you're out there writing checks. What's your view on it? What's your, what's your take? Thumbs up, thumbs down, the Federation thing going on, opportunities for them to... They're trying to do a lot. I mean, you know, cloud, we're, we're talking, uh, you know, container, um, you know, uh, there's open obviously... Stack. Been, <laughs> open stack. Open <laughs> stack. They got everything going on. Um, you know, um, what they're doing with data center OS stuff. I mean, they're, you know, Ragu, you know, love him. I mean, he's, he's, doing, he's taking on a lot, which is, uh, which is what they should do. And, um, you know, obviously, bleak, believer in v VMware and very bullish and I don't believe that containers are going to wipe them off the map. I mean, it's just, they're, uh, you know, 
I, I'm, you know, they're very entrenched. enthusiastic they're about their share. Yeah, they're entrenched, and but they are no question taking on a lot. And yeah. um, you know, I uh, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't hold back from investing in a company that competes with VMware. I mean, w you know, with all that said, um, they certainly have their exposure areas like any other major company. incumbent in a very yeah. dynamic market, which we have today, which is not changing anytime soon. So, you know, very bullish. But with that said, I'm looking at opportunities. You know, anything if somebody comes in and say they want to and knock off VMware, I'm listening. Yeah, and also that's, you know, going back down the investment thesis. Singles, doubles, home runs, is always talked about in the metaphor of venture investing. A lot of companies, we were talking about the storage presence here, a lot of these companies, a lot of storage DNA in this show, has a lot of action going on in storage, but you know, 99% of the storage companies become R&D for the big guys. I mean, mm -hmm. where was the last, the last big escape velocity storage company? It was NetApp. Right. Mm. I mean, Pure's trying to nibble at the heels of EMC, um, but. Well, Nimble's pretty good, you know, obviously. Nimble, but I mean, there's, um, you know, there's been doubles, if they get bought, that's they an get bought, right. Where's right. the big standalone, home run? Yeah. Where's the home run in this ecosystem? That's what everyone wants to know. Well, I mean, I, we believe that, that with flash and with virtualization, talk about containers, that these new technologies uh, get, catch these people flat-footed, right? And so, when these, these people being the big incumbents, NetApp, EMC, and these are big trends, we all can't ignore them, and there's going to be a big company or two or three that will be independent companies yeah. that will play into those trends. So, uh, you know, you talk about Pure going public later this year, Tintree will go public next year. You know, obviously there's Nimble. I mean, there's a long, there's yeah. there's a handful of others. I mean, it's not going to be five, but there's probably going to be you know two or three that, that are standalone because these things are. Yeah, we, we feel these are really big. These are big changes. And you're one of the best investors in the enterprise, and I want to get your perspective on something. Thank what you. It, what is NEA? That. Yeah, I've been watching your your work for many many years, as you know. Um, um, Chen's new guy in the scene, he's kicking some ass. He's got his first hit with the Docker, his first investment. He's going to be on next. We love him. He's a great investor, XVMware as well. Um, but I want you to share with the folks out there the Pete Sonsini DNA and the NEA. What is NEA's identity? If you had to kind of say, you know, as a firm, yeah. you know, what are you guys all about? I mean, you got $3 billion, so it's not yep. like you're screwing around throwing darts at the board. You probably have a lot of systematic yep. kind of in research, but $3 billion is a lot of cash yep. to deploy. Yep. What is the identity of NEA? Identity is, we are, we have a, we're a big firm with a big network, but we operate as a very small, nimble team. So that's what you got to remember about NEA. The, the culture of the place, going back to my partner Dick Kramick, made it a very tight-knit group that, is, that can act very nimble and uh, at the same time have a very, very broad breadth with you know, tentacles in the market that can help our portfolio companies. So we're all about using our network to help our companies, be good investors for LPs, of course, but uh, that's what's different. To run, operate at scale and to, ha to really bring the resources of the firm to make good investments as well as to help our portfolio companies, that's hard. So having that's a good hard. network is your key. Yeah, but, but it's, it's a good network, but it's how do you, how do you have a, cult, I mean, how do you have 60 investment professionals and harness all of the power of them to make fast decisions, okay? It's very difficult to do that. How do you do, you can't just start, you know, I mean, it takes, because these are venture guys with egos, there's a, like, you know, different investment focuses, I mean, their compensation, I mean, the whole thing to make it all work, um, it takes a model. We're, right now we're up investing in our fifth fund that's over two and a half billion dollars, so we kind of have it down. And what you don't see with NEA is a lot of, you know, front Behind and center kind of, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you, right. There's a lot and, of stuff going on that people don't see. Yeah. That teamwork. That, no question about that. And, you know, we could do a better job of maybe, you know, the banner ads or whatever to, to get our name out there, but we think it all just goes down to our investment yeah. track record. And if you look at the, if you look at the companies we've invested in, um, you know it's uh, you know Tableau or speaks for I mean, itself. It speaks for itself exactly. Pete Sonsini, general uh, partner at New Enterprise Associates NEA, is their known NEA VC is their Twitter handle. Pete, great to see you. Uh, XVMware here inside the cube doing deals. He's uh, got a lot of cash to deploy, so contact Pete Sonsini. <laughs> These guys are all looking for hot deals, and if you want to compete with VMware, he said he's listening. So, Pete, thanks for sharing. We'll be right back with more after this short break on the Director's Set live in San Francisco. <laughs> 